This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's Godzilla, brought to us by Anna Barbera and the Toho Company. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Duel, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So this week's Saturday morning TV log is the animated series of the big monster itself that always takes over Tokyo, but is the hero of this series, Godzilla. An animated series produced by Hanna-Barbera along with Henry G. Saperstein, who of course was best known for giving us the Mr. Magoo series as well as the Dick Tracy show in the 60s produced by UPA. The show originally premiered on NBC in September of 1978. Yes, I'm just a month away from the 45th anniversary of this series. So, with the title of the Godzilla Power Hour. It continued under various titles until 1981, packaged with previous Hanna-Barbera tunes. <clears throat> it's based on the character by the Toho Company. Later on, it would acquire the retronym of the Godzilla original animated series for its release on DVD. But I'll get to that later. Anyway, the series follows the adventures of a team of scientists on the Calico, a hydrofoil research vessel, headed by Captain Carl Majors. The rest of the crew includes scientist Dr. Quinn Darian, her nephew Pete, and her research assistant Brock Borden. Along for the ride is the cowardly nephew of Godzilla and Pete's best friend, the comic relief of this series, Godzuki. Now, unlike the big uncle, he he can fly. Well, he can attempt to fly using the small wings on his arms, but whenever he tries to breathe fire, he only cops up smoke rings. Whenever there's trouble, they call upon Godzilla by using a special signaler when in danger, such as attacks by other giant monsters, not in any ways connected to other monsters Godzilla tackled in the movie. Also, Godzuki can roar to summon Godzilla as well. Now, the size in the animated series shifts radically, sometimes within a single episode or even a single scene. For instance, Godzilla's claws can ramp around a large ship, and only minutes later, the team of scientists fit rarely neatly in Godzilla's palm. Well, I mean on his palm, excuse me. In addition, Godzilla's trademark atomic breath is altered so he breeds simple fire. He can also shoot laser beams from his eyes, much like Superman's heat vision. Now then. Now, in regard the, the, to the origin of the series, Joe Barbera came up with the idea to, of licensing it. Now, even though um, he and the old Hannah had been dead for some time, but according to my source, he explained in a 1990s interview, my job back then was to dig up new characters, new ideas, new shows, and I had wanted to do Godzilla for a while. I liked the monster thing and the way it looked, and I thought we could do a lot with it. So I contacted Henry Saperstein, who was a very good friend, and we got to talking about it. Then there was an executive at the network who wanted to get into the act and urged us to line the storyline up. So I came up with the new character, Godzuki, who was like a son. Yes, and of course, this was even before Scrappy-Doo was introduced the following year in the Scooby-Doo franchise. The show has so far some relationship, which they had already done, like with Oggy Doggy and Doggy Day and Johnny Quest. Doug Wildey, creator of Johnny Quest, came on board as producer. Now, Barbara continued and said that he wanted the series to be more or less straight a straight adaptation of the movie series. But, according to him, he says, When they start telling you in standards and practices, don't shoot 
any flame at anybody, don't step on any buildings or cars, then pretty soon they have taken away all the stuff he represents. That became the problem to maintain a feeling of Godzilla and at the same time cut down everything that he did. We managed to get a fair show out of it. It was okay. Godzuki kind of got the kids going. That's true. I I agree with that. But even so, I did catch the show when it was rerun on Cartoon Network in the 90s. <coughs> but I do believe it was showing syndication as well. But I could be wrong. But anywho, I'm trying to see here. Well... No. No, I'll, okay, no, it did. I'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, each week, Godzilla would tackle all sorts of various monsters. Again, no what, no relation to any of them we've seen in the movies and what have you. That include ranging from a Megavolt monster, let's see, the Firebird, Energy Beast, all the... Oh, the list goes on. The Time Dragons. Believe me, there's so many of them. After a total of 26 episodes were produced and aired for two seasons, the show ended but how, in 1980. But however, it continued in reruns for the next year. <clears throat> now then. Now, also, this was the year when um, Fred Silverman, who was formerly at who was recently at ABC got to, went to NBC to try and pull them out of their rain struggle, but well, just wasn't happening. And this was before they introduced the infamous Jingle of Proud as a Peacock. That didn't happen until the next year. This was from 1978, and that was at NBCS. Um, run. <laughs> this I bring that up just in case you didn't know. Anyway, the Godzilla Power Hour consisted of, as it started out with, <coughs> with um, Godzilla, along with another Hanna-Barbera produced show, Janna of the Jungle, which I have yet to talk about that show. She, That character would appear in an episode of Yogi Space Race, which debuted the same year. Now, the first eight episodes aired as the Godzilla Power Hour. In November... A couple months later, the show was expanded to an hour and a half, making that the first half our bear series to do that even before the Smurfs came out. And added reruns of Johnny Quest. And what's now called the Godzilla Super 90. Soon, the following year, it was split off the show was split off into its own half hour, and the show aired in its own half hour, time slot simply Godzilla in September of the next year. And then a couple months later, it was now the Godzilla Globe Trotters Adventure Hour, where it was now teamed with, I believe it was the Super Globe Trotters, which debuted in 79, before another repackaging was done in September of the following year with reruns of Dioma Dog Wonder, and, as, and it was the Godzilla Dioma Hour. And then in May of 1981, it went well, as the Godzilla Hong Kong Fuli Hour. And then the show ended. No, wait. It, it ended until. No, I got a little sidetracked. It later changed until the show got canceled in May of 81. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> but yeah, I will say I think this is a pretty good show and what have you. Uh, of course, there would be another Godzilla team called Godzilla the Series produced by Sony after the movie, the Godzilla movie, came out in 1998. Now, for our voice acting cast, we have Jeff David as Captain Carl Majors, Brenda Thompson as Dr. Quinn Darian, Hilly Hicks voiced Brock Borden. Now, I found out Hicks actually did uh, numerous, numerous other program, TV programs. Al Eisenman voiced Pete Darien. Don Misik, who's certainly no stranger to working with 
Hanna-Barbera, of course, who, of course, was voicing Scooby-Doo and other characters at the time, did Godzuki's vocal effects. And let's see. And then we have Ted Cassidy, who, of course, you knew best as Lurch from the Adams Family, and, of course, he recently voiced other characters for Hanna-Barbera, like Me or Man in the Galaxy Trio segment on Birdman and other shows. This was his last, he do Godzilla's vocal effects, which would still be used after his death the following year. This would actually be one of the last two shows he'd do. The other was Challenge of the Super Friends, which debuted the same year. Anyway. Okay, yes, I did make an error. The Godzilla Hong Kong Fu Hour started in November of 1980. So I only did the Dynamo reruns for just a couple months, and then Hong Kong Fu for the rest of them. And then they continued to air Godzilla alone from May of 81 to September of 81. There, we got it right. <coughs> and then, of course, after Godzilla ended, it would be replaced by the Smurfs. <coughs> Throughout the 80s and, and into the late 90s, the series Resident in Limbo never was seen again, with the exception of a limited video cassette release. Of a couple episodes. Then it was later. Got, then in 1993, the show returned. This time on TNT and then Cartoon Network and Boomerang Layer Guide. It was also last seen on Luke and Communications Retro TV Network Saturday Morning Lineup, from, which aired on Saturday mornings from 2015 and 2016, where they were formerly airing programs that were owned by Classic Media. Now, this is, of course, a Hanna Barbera show that's not owned by Warner Brothers, but by Classic Media, which is under license at at um, DreamWorks Classics, Net, which, of course, is DreamWorks Classics now, which is a subsidiary of Universal, a Comcast company. Now, from 2006 to 2007, Classic Media, along with Sony Wonder, released... The first 13 episodes on three separate DVD titles. The rest of the series never did get released. However, I will say that... Also, you can't find... that You couldn't see them even on Netflix on who well, the, the second season, anyway. The first season, you can. However, in August of 2021, Toho, on their, say, on their official... Well, reveal on their official Godzilla YouTube channel, they've released the series and set up three parts per episode. So you can catch, you can see the full episodes on Toho's Godzilla YouTube channel. Yes, I'm seeing correct. Yes, I'm seeing it correctly. It's just look it up. It's Godzilla official. I can't guarantee if it's whole series, but I'm trying to check. Give me a moment. Yes, you can find you can find full the full series. Both seasons are available on the official Godzilla YouTube channel. So if you didn't get a chance to watch this show, then check it out if you were into Godzilla. Then I think you'll feel right at home with this. Seriously. So let me give you a look at um, a shot of um, some, well, of one of the Godzilla shots with um the cat, the air casting. Okay, here I'll show you the ones with the um the other characters from left to right. There's um there's Doctor Darian, there's Brock, there's Captain Majors, and there's Pete, and then of course Godzuki. And just for fun, here's a shot of Godzilla holding the calico itself. See, pretty cool, huh? So now you know about Godzilla, the original animated series from Hanna-Barbera. Now, again, you can find the full series, but in three separate parts on the official Godzilla YouTube channel. So check it out if you haven't seen it. If you have seen the Godzilla cartoon, let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time later on. Tonight, when I bring to you a review of Risky Business. So I do hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, check out some of these other uh, tunes that I have. Um, 
creatures or even or even I don't know big characters. In the upper left hand corner is last week's Saturday morning TV log on the Free Willy cartoon. The upper right hand corner is another kind of a movie theme tune with a creature in that of course was Teen Wolf. Or if you would like um, maybe something else you can go to the bottom left hand corner and see the Saturday morning TV log I did for Return to the Planet of the Apes. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the Saturday morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.